As the War of the Monarch heats up with the upcoming release of Dust Till Dawn, let's dive into the lore surrounding the Demonastery. Hidden within the shadows, seemingly lost to the sands of time, the Demonastery has been all but forgotten by the people of Wraith. A large, imposing mansion, it towers above the barren landscape, looming amidst heavy fog like a vengeful apparition. Its darkened grounds are cast in shades of black and violet, illuminated only by phantom flames dancing within small wire lanterns. The edifice has long since freed itself from the shackles of the morality imposed by lesser men. Scientists, researchers, and spellcasters alike are drawn to it, lured by the promise of research without restrictions. It is a protection from the persecution of lesser, unenlightened scholars, who remain ignorant as to the means of gaining true wisdom. The residents here are secretive and unscrupulous, dedicating themselves to their fields of study with a frighteningly single-minded fervor. In the demonastery, the immoral and taboo are no limit to human ingenuity. Forbidden magics, occult studies, and heinous experiments are all welcome within its dimly lit halls, where the endless pursuit of knowledge is the only matter of any consequence. It is told that once there lived a powerful scholar, who gathered his people and guided them in the building of a mighty city, which would stand as a symbol of radiant truth. Under his guidance, that city, called Solana, entered a golden age of illumination and understanding. However, as his strength grew, the scholar delved deeper into the history of humanity and uncovered a secret which unraveled the very deepest mysteries of Wraith. This terrible burden weighed heavily on his mind and turned him against all he had believed in, driving him to seek out a different kind of power. He sought to free all of humanity and elevate himself to the realm of the beyond. In time, his brothers and sisters discovered his actions and cast him out, terrified by the energies he had come to wield. Single-minded in his quest, the once beloved scholar set out to forge his own path. He would construct a place of safety, which would remain unobstructed by the rigid ethics of his former home, and where his mission could continue unhindered. However, even as his new demonastery began to take shape, his former brother's fear turned into hatred, and their formidable legions began to lay siege on his sanctuary. Determined to keep the forces at bay, he wove a great spellwork into the very foundations of the mansion, and with a power which transcended the limits of mankind, he severed the isle from the outside world. As the last flagstone was set in place, he relinquished his own flesh and blood, fusing himself with the manor. His strength hid the isle from prying eyes, and the remnants of his spirit is said to guide the demonastery to this day. In the centuries since its founding, the demonastery has established itself as a place freed from the shackles of morality. Researchers and academics from all across Wraith have flocked to the mansion, seeking a place to continue their studies without fear of retribution. Despite their differences, the residents have one thing in common, the self-same reason for which the demonastery accommodates them, the eternal pursuit of knowledge, no matter the cost and by any means necessary. These brilliant minds, once scorned and cast out by their own people for daring to question the mores of the world around them, are haunted by enemies who continually hunt them. Foremost amongst these forces is the Golden City of Solana, who would wipe out every last one of them for their so-called heretical movement. Even now, it seems to annihilate them for daring to pursue knowledge outside of the light. While Solana continues to grow stronger with each passing year, the Demonastery must gather its forces and stand against it, before the forces of light become too powerful to overcome. The residents of the Demonastery originate from across the many regions and kingdoms of the world of Wraith, unified only by their voracious appetite for arcane knowledge. Biomancers, arcanists, wizards, conjurers, summoners, witches, necromancers, alchemists, and mechanologists number among those who now reside within the mansion each with their own agenda and field of study. Every resident of the Demonastery has decided to pursue their own research at any cost, regardless of the consequences. These scholars, irrespective of their backgrounds, are united by their single-minded determination to delve into the fields of study long since abandoned by the rest of Wraith. The Demonastery provides a safe haven for these outcasts, exiles, and fugitives, offering the opportunity to seek knowledge without interference. For some, that knowledge unlocks a power which grants them the ability to control the world around them. For others, their research is the basis of understanding and wisdom, a quest born out of sheer curiosity. No matter the reason for their arrival at the gates, all residents are welcome at the Demonastery, which changes to fit the needs of those who live within it. 
Their rooms transform to match not only the scope of their research, but also the value of their studies to the demonastery itself. Every resident's work is compiled within the manor's records, accumulating an archive of the studies of every person who has passed through its halls. Most of the demonastery's residents have studied the arcane arts in some form or another in their careers, seeking to understand the nature of the Aether and how it affects the world of Wraith. Some are born into the ways of power, drawing their innate abilities from their own bloodlines, while others spend their lifetimes in studying their chosen path, learning how to call upon the blessings of their guiding figurehead. Still, others choose a different route, looking to possess the kind of influence which can only be offered by the shadows. There are entities which remain unknown to the general population of Wraith, lingering just beyond the edge of the physical realm. Those who seek true supremacy call upon them, trading away their own knowledge, their minds and souls, their futures and their pasts, in exchange for the power of the shadows. Making pacts with these beings is an unforgivable crime throughout most of Wraith, and those who pursue Shadow Aether often face severe consequences for practicing their craft. The Demonastery is the only place in the world where the study and practice of Shadow Aether is not only permitted, but encouraged. Over the centuries, the residents of the Demonastery have delved into many long-forgotten areas of study, most of which are forbidden to the outside world. Sometimes, experiments in these sciences can result in the foulest of abominations, created by toxic tinctures and the darkest types of biomancy. Other times, a creation is intentionally brought to life, summoned into existence by the spellcasters who inhabit the Demonastery's halls. Some of these entities which now exist within the mansion remain a mystery to even the oldest residents, their origins unknown to all but the very edifice itself. After years of careful planning, some of the Demonastery's residents successfully achieve their greatest ambition, sundering the veil between this world and the next. A doorway marked in blood, activated by ancient arcane energies, now serves as the gateway to Iarathael. A mirrored reality, the eternal realm of the Old Ones, where the most ancient secrets in Wraith's history slumber still. However, any gateway to the eternal realm is innately unstable. Iarathael is, by its very nature, in a state of constant transformation, and no two people who walk through the gateway will arrive in the same place. They will be transported to different corners of a mercurial reality, where even time itself is distorted. While it is easy to step through the doorway, there's no telling what one might find on the other side. Ordinarily left to their own individual courses of study, the residents of the Demonastery have united for the first time in centuries. Its various factions, orders, and residents have come together to further their shared goals. With the gateway to Iarathael open, they seek to harness the creatures and entities which lie beyond, and thereby unleash their forces upon all who gather within the light. For the first time, victory is within their reach. In overthrowing Solana, they will finally rid themselves of their greatest enemy, and once again claim their rightful place within the lands of Wraith. Should they succeed, there will be nothing left to stand in their way, and the residents of the Demonastery will at long last be free to pursue their aims unchecked. As dusk consumes the day, the Demonastery's otherworldly shadow hordes tear through the dimensional rift, hell-bent on the destruction of Solana. Yet in their darkest hour, allies emerge in unity alongside the valiant defenders of light, in hope of once more seeing in the break of dawn. All right, hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are as stoked as I am for the War of the Monarch pre-release. We're only a few weeks away now, uh, you know, just ahead of the release of the upcoming set, Dust Till Dawn. Uh, and I hope that you learned something from this video and that it helped to put things into context a little bit for you. So as mentioned, you know, I'm sort of selfishly putting this video series together because I wanted to learn more about the lore of Flesh and Blood, this game that we love so much. So the next video in this series, which we'll be releasing soon, again, ahead of the War of the Monarch pre-release, is going to look at the lore surrounding Solana. So that should help further put things into context. Uh, but for now, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this lore series, if you like it. Um, but yeah, we'll chat soon, okay? Cheers, everybody. Some of the residents of the Demonastery include, and bear with me here, Aramis, Ar Ar Aramis, Kaoime. Corva, Jerome, Ivor, Leon, Maeve, Neal, and Steve. Steve's specialty lies in plants, 
In the eight years since he arrived at the monastery, he has holed himself up in his room, trading plant materials with other researchers in exchange for information and supplies. His room is overflowing with almost every plant known to man, including some varieties long since thought extinct. As his room lacks any clear source of light or water, some residents are curious as to how he manages to keep his plants alive. Steve. Steve.